So, you wanna start 3D printing. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, thank you for dropping by. If you're a repeat subscriber and you've been here before, well, welcome back. Today is gonna to be a little bit of a different video. I haven't done a intro to 3D printing video like this in quite a while. I'm gonna be honest, I really wasn't happy with the last one. So I wanna make a new updated one, but I wanna make it a lot more laid back. I want this to feel like we're just two buddies hanging out in a room, just talking. I know about 3D printing, you don't and I'm just gonna talk you through it. What is 3D printing? What 3D printers do I recommend? Do you have to pay for the software or the programs? How do you even get started? I just want this to feel like this nice little two-way conversation. And I think that'll make it go a lot smoother and be a lot easier for you guys to digest. Now, for the sake of time, I don't want this to be an hour long video. I want this to be a bite-sized little video for you guys. So at the very end of it, you have a better understanding and you can navigate the space a little bit better. So throughout this video, I'm gonna be referencing about five or six of my other videos that go into way more depth about the specific things I'm talking about, what printers to buy, the software, the slicer, that type of stuff. And if you know that topic that I'm already talking about, then you can skip using the timestamps at the bottom and just like, oh, I just want to learn about this thing. I already know about that. So hopefully that kind of helps it just flow a lot better. Like, hey, if you understand what I'm talking about, you can kind of just skip that part. But it should make a lot more sense as we go through. So how about we just jump right into it? What is 3D printing? For the sake of this video, we're only talking about FDM 3D printing or fused deposition modeling. That's the more common 3D printing stuff you know you see around the internet, where you're taking plastic and using it to build up shapes. Imagine something like a hot glue gun. You're literally just, you make a circle, lift up the hot glue gun, you make another circle, you do that enough, and you're gonna have a cup. There's no cup in my hand, maybe the, maybe the, maybe, is that a cup? It looks like that. That's all FDM printing is. It's fusing and depositing plastics or some other material into making a shape. There are other types of printing like SLS or SLA, but those use like UV light and lasers to actually print. Sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their heads. Way different topic for another time, though they are really cool. But that's all 3D printing is. It's melting plastic in the shapes using witchcraft and science, and then you get something like a, a Deadpool helmet. So now you find yourself here wondering, well, how do I get into printing? The first thing you need to ask yourself is, what do you want to make? Why are you getting into this hobby? Are you printing small little brackets, things to hang your headphones on the wall? Or are you trying to make something like Iron Man suits and get into cosplay? Like, what is the purpose? What is your function? What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my God. Now, this is going to be my first video recommendation because if you haven't yet answered this question, I would very much recommend you guys watching this video. It's one of these. It's on the whole screen. This is a video I made last year around the holidays, the best 3D printers of 2023. Now, if you're watching this video in the future, in a few months around the holidays of 24, or maybe 25, I will have an updated version. It will be in the description of this video if it's out or the video you're watching. And this is a good video to see the size of the machines. I can't go through all those machines in this video, but I have them all there on the desk. I'm showing you what fits in what printer, if you want a big or tall or small printer, something like that. So it's a great video to watch if you just want a better visual of how big do you want to print. Now, if you already know what you want to print, then you don't have to worry about that video. You can go right on to, well, how much do you want to spend on the printer? I know they kind of go hand in hand, but you have to think about the budget. How much do you want to spend on a machine? Do you want to spend $200 or do you want to spend $2,000? There's a wide variety, but I imagine if you're watching me in my videos, you're more in the hobby level of 3D printing. You're not looking for a $50,000 industrial 3D printer. You're, you're trying to make at-home stuff. It's, it's an at-home hobby. You can absolutely get started in this hobby for about $200. There are machines out there that are still pretty good for 200 bucks. They're a little more on the small size, but they still get the job done. Now, this is gonna be my second video recommendation, but don't worry, I'm gonna also recommend one specific printer at the end of this spiel. This is a video where I cover all the different budgets of 3D printing. If you have about $200, I have a recommendation there. Actually, I think I have a recommendation for $100 in that video, but we go all the way up, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, all the way to a thousand plus, depending on the budget, the pros and cons of the machines in that price, range and the ones I recommend. If you watch those two videos in a row, you will have such a better understanding of the size and the variety of printers and it'll absolutely help you decide what printer you want to get. But if you just want me to recommend one, it's going to be this beast. This is the Bamboo Lab P1S, and you saw it featured in a lot of recent videos. It even helped print this Deadpool and Wolverine mask. Right now, this is my absolute most recommended just get into the hobby printer. No, it is not cheap. It is not a $200, $100 printer. I think right now they're sitting at $599 or $699.
$5.99, I was right. Can you get cheaper printers? Yes. Can you get bigger printers? Yes. But this right here is my all around just just get it out of the box and it works machine. It doesn't have crazy bells and whistles. It's just big enough to print some pretty decently sized stuff. It's not the smallest one on the market and it's just gonna be easy and fun for you to use. Like you're not gonna have problems with this thing. But again, if you want different variations or recommendations, go look at that other video, the, the, the ones through all the budgets and you'll be perfectly on your way. Okay, so you picked the printer, you watched some videos, you did some research and you know what machine you want, but now you need the filament that goes in the machine. This is 3D printer filament. It's just long plastic spaghetti. You pull it out like this, it, it, that's it. This is all that prints. Now, there is a wide variety of this stuff. It comes in all different types and colors. Like look at these, look at these, these are all beautiful. Oh, up down here, see? Like so many varieties. These two masks here were just printed in raw colors. There's no paint on these. A lot of stuff in here, I painted it. Don't worry about that stuff. What I want you guys to kind of start with is something called PLA and I, it's down here. I do not remember what it stands for. This is the most basic 3D printing material. Every 3D printer out there that you're gonna find on the market can use this stuff. It is the most forgiving, it is the easiest to print with, and you're just gonna have an all around good time with it. Now there are other materials, PETG, nylons, carbon fibers, um, flexible materials, ASAs. It, it, it gets kind of confusing, but if you're not, you're not worried about that right now, that's all research you can kind of do down the line. If you do want some recommendations on the filament I've been using though, like my favorites, and yes, it's I know it's another video recommendation, but if you just if you just go with PLA, you're fine. But you can look at this video right here and then it gives you all the recommendations of the stuff I've used, different brands, where to find it, what's better, what's worse, the, the goods and bads of it. But like, just go with PLA, you're fine. Really the easiest way to get your hands on this stuff is just go on Amazon, type in PLA filament, on Amazon and that's it. Look at some reviews. I use, that's where I get all this stuff. I don't even know what brand this is. It's from Amazon and it prints. It used to be a lot more complicated than that. Five, 10 years ago, it was not that simple, but now you can just get a lot of generic filaments and they just print. I have noticed more and more that new printers are coming with less and less filaments. I used to get a printer and get a full spool with it. Now you get these like, these little half spools and just make sure if you order a machine, get a spool with it, maybe from the website. I knew I know websites like Elegoo and Bamboo, like when you buy a machine, they usually come with filament anyway. So you should be good there, like there's bundle packages, but just get a roll. Now, setting up the machine. This used to be the complicated part. Four or five years ago, you had to build a lot of the machine. Now, just like that P1S that was behind me, they kind of come out of box. I call them turnkey printers, where if it's not as turnkey, 100% assembled like that thing, it's gonna be like 95%. You might have to take it out of the box, stand it up, put like two or three screws in, a plug or two, and you're good to go. And the instructions have gotten way better over the years. I can promise you, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna have to spend more than half an hour setting up any modern printers, unless you're the Prusa XL, like, sheesh. Anyway, don't worry about that. It's gonna be easy, follow the instructions. A lot of them come with video tutorials now, or you can just search a YouTube video of like an unboxing, you know, of your specific machine, and you'll have it set up in no time. Throw on a movie, listen to some music, and yeah, you just build the printer. It's pretty simple. So. We figured out the machine, the printer you wanna get. It's hopefully on the way, I think. You have some filament, but how do you print the thing? What do you, what do you, how do you do this? Like, what do? Well, for that, you're gonna need a 3D model. And 3D models, a lot of them are free. You don't need any 3D modeling experience to get into this hobby. And that's always a bonus when jumping into something that can seem as intimidating as this. There are tons of websites out there. Thingiverse, Thang, Maker World, Holtz 3D. There are so many websites offering free 3D models because there's people out there who just like modeling as a hobby. Like that's what they do. Now you can get really nice paid models like some of these Iron Man suits and props on the wall. Modelers model and design them and they charge you for the file, but they put some work into it. So it's a mixed bag depending on the website you go to, but you can print a lot of stuff without ever having to spend a dime on a 3D file. I'll link a bunch of them down below and I'm gonna be linking a lot of stuff in the description for this video. But if you want a more comprehensive video and this is the fourth and final, fourth? Fifth, fourth, this is the fourth four or five video recommendations I'm gonna make in this video. And it's a whole video explaining all of the different websites I know of to get 3D files to the free and paid. So go watch that video if you want a better breakdown of all the options out there, or just go to that video and look in the description of that one. And you're gonna see all the websites, click around and just shop for a model. This was free on Thingiverse. Look at it, it's adorable. I will chime in with that though, if you want to get into 3D modeling, however, and actually start designing your own stuff, there are free programs for that. Blender is a free program. I don't understand how it's free. It's one of the strongest 3D modeling programs out there. It's amazing. Tons of tutorials on YouTube 
about Blender. Just search Blender tutorial. You're gonna learn to make a donut. It's really cool. You also have free programs like Tinkercad. I use Tinkercad. It's an online hosted 3D modeling website and I've used it to design things in my own room. It's a basic entry. It's like AutoCAD, just a lot simpler. You can look at Fusion 360. You can look at Maya. There's tons of modeling programs out there. So if you're getting into printing to start designing your own stuff, that's definitely the route you want to take. And you're going to spend a lot of time on tutorials, but then you can make really cool stuff. So it's a win-win. Now, the final part of all of that is making it come together and actually getting your 3D print 3D printed. You have the printer, you set it up, you have the filament, you loaded that into the printer. Maybe you did some test prints. Maybe you printed a little boat if you, if you printed the Benchy, leave a comment down below. Let me let me know. Did you print a Benchy or did you just like fire, you know, away at like an Iron Man helmet or something crazy? And you've got your 3D models. You downloaded them, you sourced whichever ones you want, but how do you actually communicate with the printer? Like, what is that process called? Well, it is referred lovingly as slicing. I hate that word because when people talk about slicing, I think of like chopping things up, like I'm slicing stuff. And technically that's what's happening, but it gets confusing when you're talking about cutting a 3D model. That's uh, another topic for something another day, but it's slicing. What this process is doing in these programs that we're gonna talk about in a second, it is taking that 3D model, let's say Mu here, and it is looking at this entire model. And as we talked about before with the hot glue gun making layers, come on. It's making layers, right? Well, it needs to make a hot glue or hot plastic stack in the shape of this mu, right? So what it's gonna do is it's gonna slice it into layers and it's gonna read at a certain thickness, the very bottom right here, the very first little layer. And it's gonna say, okay, I need to make this shape right here. And it's gonna go ahead and do that. And it's gonna make that shape in the program. And then it's gonna lift up a little bit and it's gonna make another shape, another shape, another shape. It's basically cutting this model into anywhere from 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 separate stacks and layers and just layering it on top of each other. As that hot glue gun's going around and it's printing, it's getting taller and taller and taller, it's just slicing the model up into those little layers, the X, Y coordinate. I hope all that made sense. I cover all of that in a lot of other videos too. But that's basically what's happening. So you need a program that can do that, that can actually read the 3D model slice it into these little layers and then actually send it to the printer. Now, just like a lot of 3D models, the 3D slicing software is all mostly free. Right now sitting here, I can't think of a single hobby level 3D printer where you need to pay for the slicing program. That would be that'd be crazy. You have, you bought the machine, but now you need to like pay for the program. It's not a Peloton, like it makes no sense. Now, most 3D printers come with their own slicing software. If you buy a Creality printer, it's gonna come with Creality Print. If you buy a Bamboo printer, it's gonna come with a Bamboo Studio. If you buy a Prusa, it's gonna come with Prusa Slicer. And you can download all of these for free. And honestly, many of them work with all the other printers. If you do download Bamboo Slicer, it's gonna work with a Creality. A lot of them are interchangeable now because there's one program that just does all of it. And this is my final video recommendation, I promise no more. It is called Orca Slicer. So Orca Slicer just does it all. It is a 3D slicing program that lets you take your 3D models, it cuts them up, it does everything it needs to, and then it can send them to the printer. Some printers you can send them to wirelessly depending on the setup and it kind of takes you through those steps, or you just load it into an SD card or USB USB stick and throw it in the printer and you hit print. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on using Orca, literally downloading it, setting it up, finding your printer, a little bit of an overview of all the features on it, that's what this video is for right here. I very much recommend you watching this if you are getting into printing, because again, that's not something I can cover in this video. There's so many options and different varieties of printing and models that I very much recommend that thing. But if you're familiar with printing and you already know how to navigate a slicer and you aren't using Orca, you, you should. Just, it's incredible. It communicates with so many different printers and it just makes them come out very nice. Well, not you. Well, yeah, not you. Please. You don't count. You count. I used Orca and that. They look good. That's more or less gonna do it for the basics and the approach you need to take, but let's just recap real quick and hopefully a list appears right here. So you first had to figure out what do you want to print? You're going over in your head, all right, this is kind of the things I want to do, I want to print, all right, I got, I got that figured out, this is what I want to make. And then you had to look at the size of the printers and the budget, and you know, these are all playing against each other. How much do you have to spend? What do you have to print? And is it viable? And can I get a printer that can do that in that price range? Well, now you're looking at the filaments, you figured out what filaments and materials you want to print in. Like I said, I really like my PLAs and PLA pluses. It's how I make all of my props and it's worked out just fine. And then now you're looking at your 3D models. Where do you get your models? Which models do you want to print? Or are you designing your own learning to 3D model? And then finally, you have the slicing programs, the free software you can get to actually let the printer and the 3D model, you know, go back and forth so you can actually print the thing you want to make and print. And now 
hopefully you have a little bit better of an understanding of the terminology of 3D printing, kind of where to get started, how to approach it, because again, it can seem very, very overwhelming. So to wrap up the video, I wanna talk about just a couple final tips I would give just as, you know, hey, you're a beginner, watch out for these things. First up, when you get the printer, make sure you clean the bed. The build surface you're gonna be printing on, getting your greasy, grimy, grubby hands over this leads to the most failures out of any 3D printers I see. The bed's not clean, clean your bed. All you gotta do is hit it with some isopropyl alcohol, like rubbing alcohol, and just keep it clean. Some beds recommend that you put glue on them. It's gonna say, like this one says, please apply glue, apply. please apply glue, stick before, please apply glue before print. I can't read put glue on it. It's like Elmer's glue. Just use a glue stick, but like make sure it's not greasy and slimy. Don't put your printer on a wobbly desk. Your 3D printer is going to move back and forth. Make sure it's on a sturdy platform. Yeah, this is a good desk. Keep your pets away. A lot of people don't think about cats. Huh? Cats get into anything. I don't have any. I've seen some horror stories though. If you have a fully enclosed printer like that P1S before, you don't really have to worry about it. But if it's a printer that has a bunch of moving parts in it, maybe put it in a room where your pets can't get to it because screw the printer, screw the print. I don't want, no one wants your animals getting hurt or like getting burned or something. So just keep that in mind. Review your prints before sending them. In that Orca Slicer tutorial, as you go through it, I'm gonna show you how to look at the 3D print before it's even 3D printed. You're gonna literally be able to look at the slices that the printer is gonna put out. Just go and like take some time and look at it. Like review it, move around. Oh, this is printing in midair. Like it'll make sense in the tutorial, but go and review your prints before you send them. It can tell you a lot if the print's gonna fail or not. And probably one of the biggest or two of the biggest things. First, do not compare yourself to other people. You're probably gonna join some Facebook group or you know some forum or Reddit. Don't compare your progress or your success or failures to other people in the group. People love posting and showing off their 3D prints. It's literally how I made my living, showing people how to 3D print. And you see me with an Iron Man suit, but your Iron Man suit's not coming out that good, or you want to view like this, but it keeps failing, or it didn't come out as clean, or it doesn't look as smooth. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't let that be a deterrent, because you're gonna have failures. That's point two, actually. Embrace those failures a little bit and learn from them. It used to be a much more frustrating hobby. Five years ago, it was, it was something. You really had to embrace failure, because it taught you how to move on and how to get better. Printers are a lot more efficient than they used to be, so you shouldn't be running into as many issues as someone like me or somebody even 10 years ago would have ran into. But just stop, collect yourself, try to figure out what went wrong. And if, you know, worse comes to worse, ask for help. The community is amazing. Facebook groups, Reddit, there's Discord groups. You can message people who are probably having very similar issues or just Google and search it. Try to figure out what happened and try to ask for help. People love helping in this hobby and just ask for it. So I do hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you liked what you saw here or you want to stay tuned for other videos I have coming up, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out and then you don't miss any of my uploads. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in the video, drop a comment down below. Guys, I read every single comment you guys leave. You'll always see at least one thumbs up like on it. That's me reading all of them. And then if it's a really cool or funny or nice comment, I usually do like the heart, you know, liked by a creator. That's how you know I specifically saw it. But if there's always one upvote on it, that's me. I can't respond to all of them, but I do read every single one of them. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day. You look better in it anyway.